Yo, what's up everyone? It's Tim from TestDemi.com here live and direct with the new edition of our video series, Test Automation for Beginners. Today is going to be tutorial number six and we're going to get into something real special today and that's going to be called Python operators, right? In the last video we talked about Python data types when you have the, the integer data type, you have the string data type, you have the float dating type and you have the boo or the boolean data type right so when you have these data types a lot of times you have to do something with them specifically like the integer data type right uh, the integer for example the whole number number let's look at the number one so if you want to say one what what you gonna do with one one plus one the plus symbol is called an operator and that plus symbol is also uh, what's called an arithmetic operator like we might have learned from algebra or a variety of other um, subjects in school for those uh, that you know uh, took those in college or you know, in high school wherever the case might be so let's look at a few of these operators today uh, today we're gonna look at uh, operators we're gonna look at the arithmetic if I can pronounce it, arithmetic operators we're gonna look at the comparison operators and finally we're gonna look at the logical operators. so let's get going let's go Let's get cracking. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. All right, so if you guys can see here, I already have it up. I've been working on this. I've been doing, you know, one thing I mentioned, you got to put in work, practice, practice, practice. So let's um, let's jump right into this, okay? Uh, let's see. I'm going to bring up my uh, PowerPoint presentation to walk us through. Uh, as you can see here, we're looking at the first, uh, the first one here is going to be the Python arithmetic operator some of you guys might be used to this but for the sake of those that aren't let's uh, let's kind of learn together so we can grow together all right the first one we have here is the exponent uh, operator you can see it's two uh, asterisks which are uh, uh, multiplication symbols but in this case the two of them which is really the exponent right so for an example if you have four with the um, exponent um, uh, operator two that's pretty much saying four to the power of two and that gives you 16 for example if you have four exponent four that gives you 256 which is four to the power of four in other words it's going to be four times four times four times four four times all right so same thing whatever the numbers you have so let's uh, let's look at an example real quick and what i have up here as you guys might be using the previous video videos are um the uh, idle so let's look at let's do uh, for example let's do five uh exponent five right so that's five times five uh five times right so let's do five exponent uh pardon me uh exponent let's do two that should give us uh 25 right five exponent uh three should give us 125 i believe right so five times five times five so that's the that's the uh uh symbol for the uh exponent symbol let's look at the uh what's called the modulus or the remainder and the example I have here is 12 divided by 7 uh, 12 modulus 7 I love this because a lot of times if you're going to a lot of uh, test automation interviews they might try to give you some kind of uh, algorithm or some kind of challenge that has to do with the uh, modulus uh, remainder um, operator and one that's popular is the Fizzbus challenge if you guys have never done the Fizzbus challenge uh, I encourage you to do so I might do a video on the Fizzbus challenge uh, so it can kind of help you guys with your interview all right but in any case let's look at this uh, fairly quickly so let's look at uh let's look at uh eight uh and it, it's the percent sign right uh excuse me the the division sign there right for the modulus uh eight modulus let's look at uh three what does that mean so when you have eight divided by three three can be divided into eight how many times we know uh in this case it's going to be three six so that's two times and the remainder is two so when you go eight modulus two we can say what's the remainder when you do eight modulus three that should give us two right same thing we go 14 uh modulus uh pardon me uh what am i doing <laughs> Uh, modulus let's say 11 what do you guys think that's going to be how many times can 11 be divided be divided in 14 that's one so the remainder uh, it, it can be one time but the, so you have a remainder of three so it's going to be three uh, as your answer let's look let's look at one more let's do 17 um, uh, modulus uh, four All right so how many times can four be divided to 17 that's uh, 17 that's four times because four times four is 16 and you have a remainder of one so your 17 modulus four the answer should be one right so that's just one uh 
example, uh, several examples of the modulus uh, operator. Uh, we also have the quotient, uh, which is here, for example, the example we have there is the quotient. It's uh, when you divide, when you do 20 quotient 6, um, how many times can 6 go into 20? In this case, it's going to be 3 times, so your answer is going to be 3, right? Same thing if you have a 8 uh, quotient, uh, let's see, 2. It can go in there 4, and there's no remainder, right? So the answer is 4. One example, if you do 9 uh, quotient uh, 1, uh, what do you think the answer is going to be? How many times can 9 should be 9, right? So it can go in 9 times. So that's the example of the uh, quotient. The example, the quotient is how many times can it be divided? Um, and the modulus is what is the remainder after you do the div division. So it's just important that you guys are familiar with these um, particular arith arithmetic operators. And I'm sure you guys are familiar with division. We have um, 20 divided by 6, which is 3.3, uh, and some more um, values there. We have multiplication, 3 times 2, 9 my minus 4, uh, 20 plus 5, right? So those are examples here. So let's look at a few here. Let's say 20 divided by 6. That's just a regular division operator. You can do 14 minus 7, that gives you 7. You can do 25 uh, times 5, that gives you 125. You can do 2 plus 3, that gives you 5. So those are a variety of different other arithmetic uh, operators. So let's look at uh, another operator here. Um, pardon me. Let's look at another operator here, which is the uh, comparison operator. And a comparison operator just compares two values, and it's either going to evaluate. As you can see, we have an operator. We have the meaning, so this is the greater than symbol. And what has always helped me from high school and my learning going forward is uh, I'm right-handed naturally. So anything with my right hand, if I can make that symbol like this, and not the P sign to the side, right? It's just the greater than symbol. So that tells me greater than is my right hand and less than is my left hand. That helps me. I don't know what helps you. You might write it down. You might have to memorize it. But just whatever you can do to kind of be uh, efficient at this, right? The better, you, the better you can memorize this, the more efficient automation developer you'll be when you begin to really get into those automation of web frameworks and uh, test automation frameworks and web-based applications. Uh, so we have the operator, the mean in here, uh, the example, and evaluate too. So let's look at a few here, right? Let's jump right back into the idle. So let's say 10 uh, greater than 1. Is 10 greater than 1 true or false? It should evaluate to true because 10 is greater than 1. All right, so is 10 greater uh, than 100? No, it's evaluate to false, right? So we go, let's do another example. Let's say 4 less than 9. Is 4 less than 9? Yes, that's true. All right, so let's do 7 less than um is 7 less than 1? No, that should be false, right? So that's an example of the uh, greater than and less than symbols. Uh, the next one we can look at here is the greater than or equals to, right? So we say 7 is greater than or equals to 9. Is 7 greater than or equals to 9? That's no, so that's a false, right? All right, let's look at the uh, less than. So if we say 6 is less than or equals to, uh, which this uh, this operator here, uh, 6 is less than or equals to 8. Is that true? That's evaluated true. All right. Uh, so that's an example of the greater than and less than symbols. You can see some of my examples I have listed here for you to follow anytime. You can, and another one that's very key uh, is the equal sign. And a lot of times, if you're coming from algebra or some other background in mathematics, it's easy to look at and you do 9 uh, equals 7. Python's not going to like that. It's going to throw a syntax error because the equal sign, equal sign in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Python is called the assignment operator. And we're going to talk about them when we get to variables, right? You assign values to to other, uh, to other a variable. Is That's the best way I can put it. So as opposed to use the equal sign, what we do is we use the equal equal. That is the that is the symbol for equal here. As you can see, this equal sign, right? So if we say 4 equals 4, is that true or false? Is 4 equals to 4? Yes, it is. So that's your true. So we say uh, 63 is equal to 14. Is that true or false? That's false, right? So that's the equal sign. And the final one we're going to look at is not true, right? So we say 1 is uh, not equals to. So we say 1, and you use the um, shift, hold down on shift, and 1, that gives you the exclamation. And now you use the assignment uh, operator. So exclamation 1. So you're going to say it's 1 is not equal to 1. That's tricky. Is 1 not equal to 1? That's true. Right. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's false. One is not equals to one. I, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So one is not equals to one, right? So um, that's false because one is equals to one, right? That's the truth. So one equals to one. That's true. So that's my fault, right? So let's look at um, 19 
is not equals to 29. That's true. It's not equals to 29. All right. So those are a few of the operators from a comparison standpoint. And finally, we're going to look at we're going to look at the operators from uh, a logical standpoint. And we have the and or and not operators here. OK, so let's look at a few of those. So if I say one is equals to one and you can see the and is a keyword. We're going to talk about that soon. And two is equal to two. So what does that evaluate to evaluate to true? Because one equals to one is true and true and two equals two. Two and true gives you true. So we say one equals to uh, let's see three, which five, which is false. Pardon me. And two equals to three. Right. That should give us false. Right. Because you have one equals to five is false and two equals false. Two equals to three is false. So false and false actually gives you a false, right? Let's go to a few more. Let's do one uh, equals to one again, and we're going to do or, right? Two equals to two, right? This should also give us true. So true or true is also true, right? Um, and let's also now let's look at um, one equals to five, or let's do two equals to three. All right, so that's false. Let me show another one. Let's do one equals to five or two equals to two. So what do we have here? We have one equals to five. Is that true or false? That's false. One does not equals five or two equals to two. What do you think that evaluates to? It's true because you have false or true, which gives you uh, true here. All right, you can see here or tr true or false gives you true. True and true gives you true. Not true. Uh, uh, not true equals false. So let's um, let's look at uh, one more here. Uh, let's look at uh, one equals to five, uh, and let's say or nine is let's say not equals to five, and that gives us true, right? So those are two uh, other expressions that we evaluate here. So just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown on the operator uh, uh, operator functions uh, within Python. We've looked at the comp uh, logical operators, the arithmetic operators, and we looked at the comparison operators. So when you get a chance, practice, practice, practice these operators so you can be great. All right. So to then, I'm going to see you in the next video. But before we get there, don't forget to subscribe. And the most important thing, everyone, is that all these videos, right, with the uh, uh, the operators, the data types, and everything else we've been looking at, they're all building blocks. It's going to help us get stronger, and build stronger skills for Python, and eventually when we get to Selenium Web Drive. Because all Selenium Web Drive, when you get there and you're programming in Python, you're just going to be running Python code and just calling the Selenium Web Driver library and just kind of referencing some of those actual syntax within Selenium API. But for the most important part, you have to be strong. You want to be strong, and you will be strong because we are going to the top. See you soon. It's the next video. Testdemi.com. Subscribe. See you soon. Peace.